Alrighty, so welcome to the next Lectures with Liddington. Um, we're going to talk today about matter. Um, before we can really dive into living things, we need to talk about chemistry. We need to talk about biochemistry. That is the chemistry of living things. Um, because if all living things are made up of cells, well, those cells have other parts that they're made up of. And everything inside of those cells is made up of atoms. So we're going to talk today about those atoms. Um, so to start from the very beginning, we'll talk about the structure of atoms. So inside, if we zoom in on an atom, there are three different parts. In the center here, we call this the nucleus, and that contains both our protons and our neutrons. So this here, see how it has a positive charge? These are protons. Think proton positive, write that P. Um, think like a proton, stay positive. Remember that and have that in the back of your head at all times uh, because it's not just great for chemistry, also great for life. Um, but the protons, they have a positive charge. And then notice these red ones over here. There's nothing written on them. There's no charge. Those are neutrons and they are neutral. Right? Neutron is neutral. So they have that same sound. So hopefully that clicks. Um, that is where the mass is. These have a uh, atomic mass of one. So both a proton and a neutron, they each have an atomic mass of one. We give them a, a number of one. Um, just so that when we start looking at our periodic table, uh, there's a meaning for that. Over here, these guys, the green ones, those are our electrons. electrons. Notice there's a negative there. That's because they have a negative charge. And they have very low mass. Almost nothing. It is equivalent to if you go stand on a scale and a fly lands on your shoulder, right? Technically, it's more mass, but it's not going to show up on your scale as an increased number because it is just so small. So those are the three parts of an atom. Now, remember, when we say atom, we're specifically talking about something that is electrically neutral. We have those protons, those neutrons, and those electrons. Those protons are positive, electrons are negative, but an atom has a neutral charge. So what that means is, our protons equal our electrons. So our positives are equal to our negatives when we're talking about an atom. If we change that balance, then we're talking about an ion. So if it's not equal, we're talking about an ion. In this case, we're talking about atoms, so there is an equal number of protons and electrons. So what does that look like? Chlorine. Chlorine is Cl. If I just write Cl, that's an atom. It would have the same number of protons as it has electrons. E with the little negative sign up top, that is uh, a symbol for electrons, just a little shorthand. If I write Cl with a negative, with that same superscript there, that would be an ion. It means it has a negative one charge on it. And that means my protons do not equal my electrons. I have a change, I have an imbalance, and that is an ion. So I mentioned the periodic table. And, and how I can use those numbers. Okay, well, how? How do I do that? So here's a tile from the periodic table. 
it gives us the name of our element and its symbol, the atomic symbol. Now this could be one letter or two. Um, when it is two letters, the second is lowercase, but we always use an uppercase for the first letter. Up here, this is my atomic number. And what my atomic number tells me, this tells me the number of protons. And down here, this is my mass number, which tells me the number of protons and neutrons. It gives me the combination of protons and neutrons. Remember, this is where all the mass lies, not in the electrons. So a couple other um, things about atoms, ways we can arrange those atoms. Um, we can talk about elements. When we talk about elements, we are referring to a pure substance. So in this element, we're talking about lots of atoms that are all the same, same type of atom such as hydrogen gas, right? Hydrogen gas, it's all just hydrogens. There's nothing else in there, it's just hydrogen atoms. Now, another thing that's kind of interesting um, with our arrangement of atoms is we can have what's called isotopes. And isotopes are the same element, but with different numbers of neutrons. So what this might look like, say we talk about hydrogen, right? So most hydrogen has zero neutrons, but some hydrogen will have one neutron. Oops, that's an ugly one. So they're both hydrogens. They have the same number of protons and the same number of electrons, but we have changed the number of neutrons. So it will behave a little bit differently, um, but they are the same element. Now, another thing here is sometimes we do end up with what's called a radioactive isotope. And this means the nucleus degrades. So those protons and neutrons on the inside, you can lose some of them. Um, and when you lose those protons and neutrons, that's called radiation. Um, and that radiation could be really bad or it could be really good. Um, it sort of depends on the situation. Um, sometimes we can use this to harness in a positive way. Um, so carbon-14, you may or may not have heard about it, but carbon-14 um, is a uh, decays and um, radioactively, and we can use that to date fossils. So we can figure out how old a fossil is based off of that radiation um, given off by the carbon-14, or it can be a problem. Think like nuclear radiation, you know, um, that's kind of big and bad. Um, so it really depends on what is coming off, what, what pieces uh, of protons and neutrons are degrading and coming off of it. So now that we've kind of reviewed atoms and how we can arrange them, let's talk about drawing them so we can illustrate them in a different way.